Good day and welcome to another Siemens video. Last video I've spoken about the hard times in Calapeda shipyards. This video will be about two weeks passage through North Atlantic Ocean. After the ship has completed repairs, she was given order to proceed to Mexican Gulf, as the trade for the owner of the vessel in this area has been intensifying during the last few months. Our route was planned through the Kiel Canal, as uh, it is a good place for bunker supplies, provision and stores. Our supplies were waiting for us in the Haltenau lock, the first lock from the Baltic Sea side. We arrived at the pilot station at 8 o'clock in the morning. The weather was fine and the vessel proceeded to halt an hour without any delays with pilot on arrival. Likely for us, we had to wait for some more vessels coming to the lock, so it gave us a little more time for the receiving of the provision and the stores. Can you show a gun to the engines? Finally, the vessel was shifted from Holtonau to bunkering berth. Unfortunately, the bunkering operations took us almost all day, so we departed the bunkering station in the evening. It means that we will transit the Kiel Canal at night. During the transit we had two shifts of pilots and local helmsmen. Transit takes about 8 hours, so two shifts 4x4 four four hours is a good idea. The next lock ahead was the Brinsbüttel lock. A major crew change was expected in the lock. The tired crew from the dry docking had to go home and the fresh guys were arriving to replace them. Finally, the vessel entered the North Sea. The sea is known with its strong winds and nasty weather, so our passage was not an exemption, as it was already October and the weather was worsening with every passing day. As the crew was to fix the old painting defects remaining from the shipyard, including the newly metal covers for scrubber, we installed spatial plastic covers around the places of work, creating a so-called cocoon, uh, so we are protected against the weather during the painting. Eventually, we received information that total three rich stackers are to be loaded in the port of Mexico and we have to deviate from our original course uh, to call into a small Spanish port. The loading will be performed by using the ship's gear. Uh, the certified lashing and dunnage were already provided for the job. It is very important that the lashings uh, have the certificate and the dunnage is fumigated. Information stamp can be found on the wooden plank. It is necessary in case that the lashing plan is followed properly but the chain break anywhere occur, you can claim the supplier for the defect lashing equipment. On the other hand, fumigation of the dunge is required by, local, by many local authorities. Uh, they are afraid that we will carry some insects in the woods for their ports, so it's better to request an already fumigated dunge to avoid the fines.
finally arrived at the Spanish port. The weather was warm and sunny, there was no wind and the sea was calm. Good day for weekends somewhere outdoors, but we are here for another reason. The reason was already waiting for us on the key. Three slightly used reed stackers. We transferred the dunnage and lashings into the holds and were ready for loading. The loading plan was as follows. The reach stacker is connected forward and aft with ship's hooks, then slowly heaved up above the pier. Then the stacker is moved on the ship's side by simultaneously turning the crane jibs. During this period, the captain is standing on the bridge controlling the ship's ballast to keep the vessel upright at all the times. When the stackers are above their positions in the holds, I gave command to start lowering them and continuously monitored the progress, as it was crucial to avoid injuries and damage to the bridge stacker and the ship. Success. The first reach sucker finally touched the wooden planks in the hold. Two more to go. Tipping of the cargo in the cargo holds was the most hazard, so the lashings were planned to counter this issue. The weight of the single restacker is 72 tons. Six 12 tons chains on each side properly secured to the new winded foundations are resulting in 72 tons counter force, which will prevent the cargo from tipping. Securing chains on the front and back of the unit will prevent the movement in the fore and aft directions. Lashing of the cargo took us almost all the night. Uh, the crew was already tired, but the chains were okay. Not too tight, not too loose, as it has to be. After we reported that the lashings are completed, the pilot was invited on board and the vessel was departed. She really needed to hurry up, as the storm was approaching and was about to hit Spanish coast next evening. In the morning we have double-checked the lashings and made additional securing of the spreader with the belts. The 
keys have also been removed, as it is better to keep them in a safer place. Rich Stacker is a quite sensitive cargo, so the rolling of the ship should be reduced to minimum and we decided to keep the areas of good weather only. That's why we headed south, close to the Azores, as the strong winds and high waves were produced in the north at that time. I personally enjoy a lot when there is a good weather with no wind, the sun is shining brightly, the vessel is not rolling, and you can walk on the bridge wing with a cup of tea or coffee just to watch the sunset. This is maybe the number one pleasure in my personal top list of cool things on the ship. The change of course to south gave us some more time for the maintenance of the ship as well, so our superstructure, hatch covers and decks were fresh painted and there were no defects remaining from the dry dock. Meanwhile, we have been approaching the Mexican Gulf and the weather was becoming a little worse. One two meter swell appeared, but it was still not critical. In the beginning of November 2020, we entered the Mexican Gulf, area of our trade. Safety drills were successfully performed, found that the crew knows what they are doing and we are ready for any upcoming inspections. The first rich stacker was discharged in Kodzakalkas. I didn't shoot the discharging as the weather was nasty with a lot of raining. The second one was discharged in a port of Tuxpan. There was nothing special about it, we used ship's gear and lifted the unit with all precautions. Now Tuxpan has another vehicle to handle the cargo. After departure we headed to United States and I was about to go home from there. The new chief mate was already on board, ready to relieve me. Together we had about one week of handover, so I believe that I handed over everything I knew and I didn't forget a thing. On the way home I realized that the contract was a quite unique experience. I was present during installation of new equipment, as well as transportation of non-standard cargo like these rich stackers. Taking all above, I'm thankful to our vessel, our good lady, the captain and the crew for experience, pleasant memories and good cooperation.